Today marks the start of National Boating Week, and with warm temperatures here and summer on its way, we know many of you will be out and about on our waterways, and we want you to just stay safe. So joining us now, Charles Hayes with the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary and Dr. Brian Urgaitis, a trauma surgeon at UF Health Jacksonville. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me today. This is an issue right now because boating season is going to pick up and continue for months. What are some things people want to know when they're out on the waters to keep themselves and other people safe? Well, I think uh, first is always know your surroundings. Um, avoid uh, any uh, alcohol intoxication. Sure. And remember to wear a life preserver. I think uh, uh, Mr. Hayes can talk about the uh, U.S. Coast Guard's approved life, life preserver. Is that a big issue that you see when you guys are going out on rescues that people versus people who do or don't? Absolutely. The only PFD, personal flotation device, that works is the one that the boater is wearing. And we see a lot of children that just aren't wearing their life jackets because children learn by example and they watch mommy and daddy and mm. if mommy and daddy aren't wearing theirs why should they yeah so how prevalent are boating accidents maybe some people haven't seen them so they think that they're safe and they never happen i'm sure that's not true in 2015 there were over 4,000 accidents wow uh, with um about 626 deaths throughout the United States and almost 70 here in the state of Florida. So uh, a large portion of the deaths that happen in the United States from boating accidents happen in the state of Florida. And our goal together is to prevent those deaths. So how does law enforcement work to try and stop uh, boating accidents? What are you guys out doing to try and deal with this? Well, the Coast Guard Auxiliary is, uh, is the civilian counterpart or force multiplier for the Coast Guard. We don't get involved in direct law enforcement. One of the things that we do do, though, is education of the boaters. We hold boating safety seminars. We teach public education classes. And one of the leading causes of boating accidents is just non-education of the public. Mm -hmm. uh, approximately 74% of the fatalities that happened in the state of Florida in 2015, those boaters were not educated in boating education. So what types of injuries have you seen at Trauma 1 from boating? I'm sure there's maybe not what we expect. Sure. Uh, propeller injuries are a big problem. And Propeller in Oh, that sounds... And one of the uh, campaigns we've uh, worked with the American College of Surgeons is Stop the Bleed. So you may be out in open water and uh, have a significant bleeding injury, and we uh, advocate that you take our uh, Stop the Bleed um, course that helps uh, civilians uh, turn from bystanders to lifesavers to mm -hmm. stop uh, life-threatening uh, life bleeding. Do you find ever experienced boaters maybe take the experience for granted? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we reiterate, though, is even if you are an experienced boater, come take a boating safety class, whether they're given by the Coast Guard Auxiliary or by the Power Squadrons. Uh, the boating safety education is top-notch. So even if you're an educated boater, there's always something more to learn. And this, I don't know if you can answer this. Injuries on boats when you can't get help quickly. Yes. Is first aid a possibility on a boat? Yeah, I think um, in the day today with uh, cell phones, um, but you may be outside of the uh, reach of a cell phone, um, is to um, know basic first aid. And Trauma One offers uh, hands-only CPR courses. Okay. And also, uh, like I mentioned, stop the bleed if there was a life-threatening uh, bleeding situation. As we said, prevention, uh, as uh, Mr. Hayes and I talk about, prevention is really the number one um, way to, pre to, to prevent an injury. And one uh, program that's national, but we offer Trauma One, is the uh, Water Watcher. Okay. Especially for those uh, people that might not be um, uh, as avid swimmers or young guys, children. Could, let, me, let me hold this up. I want to make sure they can see it. I don't know if you guys can zoom in on that. I'll hold it up for a minute for you to get your cameras in place. But Water Watcher. But... And what were you saying this does? So uh, designate one individual to really watch the water when there's swimmers out there. That way they can keep an eye uh, on any uh, swimmer that may be in trouble. And also look for boats that may be passing by to protect those swimmers. If there is a problem, uh, you know, signal if, uh, the whistle that's attached here to let the swimmer know that there, there's uh, trouble or other people in the area. Well, thank you, gentlemen, so much. Important with so many people out on the boat. If you want to hear more from this interview, we'll post it later today on newsforjacks.com. Just check out the morning show page. We hope you share it with your friends or anyone who may find the information useful.